morning. Today we're going to be discussing where does anxiety come from? Now last week we discussed the various types of anxiety. In children, it's so very often starts off as separation anxiety. And then generalized anxiety disorder and panic disorder, selective mutism, all kinds of different types of anxiety. But now, what we're going to do today is understand where the anxiety comes from. So where does anxiety come from? There's part of the brain that senses, senses, mind you, not thinks. There's part of the brain that senses there's something that it needs to protect you from. Keep in mind your senses are sight, hearing, tasting, smelling, and touch. Part of the brain senses there's something it needs to protect you from. That part of the brain is called the amygdala. It's not big and it's shaped like an almond. And it comes at the bottom of the hippocampus. Now, if this is the skull, the amygdala is deep, deep, deep inside the brain. Keeping in mind that the outer parts of the brain, close to the skull, are the parts that are the thinking parts, the reflective parts. The amygdala is a sensory part of the brain. It switches on when it senses you're in danger and is, its job is to get you ready to either fight or run away. It immediately gives your body oxygen, hormones and chemicals to be strong and fast and powerful. The amygdala doesn't check things out, it just reacts. And sometimes it senses there's a threat and fuels you up even though there's nothing there that's a danger. Sort of like a, a, a smoke alarm. When you have all the alarms going off and you think, oh, something's on fire, but it's actually just your toast that's smoking in the toaster. It can fuel you up. The amygdala can pump your body filled with adrenaline and epinephrine and cortisol. And there might be nothing there for you to be anxious about. The amygdala cannot tell the difference between something that might hurt you and something that won't hurt you. So it's up to you to decide if there's a real danger. And if not, take control over your body again. Management or control of anxiety is not about trying to get rid of it. It's about trying to manage anxiety in acceptable ways. When does anxiety first occur? Being left at daycare, entering school, getting into school transport, even going to bed. Being left with a babysitter can also be anxiety provoking as can moving house or staying overnight with friends. <clears throat> Parental separation or divorce can be a, an incredible source of anxiety. Anxiety is what we call evolutionary behavior. It peaks between the ages of nine and 13 months and basically it gradually decreases after 18 months. But then round about age four or five, we again get that peak. And the anxiety diagnosis is, is rarely made before the age of five. 
So we have a window in which to train children how to cope with anxiety so that when it comes, they know what to do. The presence of an anxiety disorder in one of the parents can also lead to the persistence of normal separation anxiety. In other words, if mommy or daddy is a very anxious person, this is one of the most catching disorders around. Anxious parents reduce exposure to separations and decrease the chance of improvement. Investigators have found that childhood anxieties increase vulnerability for a broad range of anxiety and mood disorders. Approximately one third of childhood anxieties persist into adulthood if they're left untreated. An anxious child often limits his peer interactions which could lead to impairment in social functioning or isolation in adulthood. Children with untreated anxiety more frequently present with major depression, bipolar disorder, and attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. When parents discourage children's autonomy and their overprotected, involved, over-involved parents, what happens is the attachment becomes insecure and children become fearful about their safety. When there's severe parental discord, separation or divorce, or mental or physical illness of a parent, in other words, stressful life events, where there's a major disaster or a crime, these two can contribute to the anxiety in a child. Parents losing their job, the birth of a sibling, exposure to family violence, a child cannot really handle these issues without support. In the school environment, when a child displays fear and withdrawal in unfamiliar situations, is introverted or easily embarrassed, the child ends up being bullied and becomes very scared. And the child has a fear of failure to perform at expected levels. Every effort must be made to get the child out of the state of arousal as quickly as possible. By staying calm yourself, slow, deep breathing is the handbrake for anxiety, both yours as an adult and the child's. Knowing what anxiety is and the truth about where the symptoms are coming is the first step in taking back control. All right, today we've handled now where anxiety comes from, how it starts, and how it looks in childhood. Watch me next week and we'll be handling where and how to deal with anxiety. Thank you.